Number three, what has been the most valuable investment advice you've ever received? Probably the best investment advice I had was uh, a guy from uh, called John Edwards from Residex, uh, who you'd remember from the old days. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times people would talk about how can property prices keep in increasing when wages aren't keeping up with house price inflation. And he gave the answer to say, well, in the parents' generation, they had double digit interest rates. They have massive blocks. They have one income earner per family. These days, we've got smaller blocks. We've got double income per family. We've got interest rates in the single figures. And we've got government grants and things like that to give first home buyers a chance to uh, get into the market and things like that. But he said the real thing that pushes property prices is when you go to the blue chip areas. So if you think of, say, in Sydney, the eastern suburbs or eastern beaches, Lone or Shore in the west, you avoid the CBD because there's no limit of supply and, and height restrictions. In those other areas, you get three-story height limits. And so in those areas, there's no more property, so there's no supply. And there's still lots of demand from young professionals with high-paying jobs, wealthy parents that will give them deposits and stuff like that. And we're not talking about buying 50 or $100 million Point Piper. We're talking about $1 or $2 million bond I am manly. Yep. He said, the basic law of economic, of, of supply and demand like that you learned at school, that's the thing that will keep pushing prices up. And that's why I think that is the most solid market in Australia or in the world is those blue chip markets because there is no affordability problems there. So the saying, they're not making any more land, I tend to think that's true in those areas, right? But where you've got an infill site and you're subdividing, they are making more land. <laughs> They've just said created more land to sell, right? But definitely not in Bondi. And that's why it's a solid investment. Not that everyone can that's afford it. So when I bought that house and land package, the, the presenter there, who's uh, another author as well, it was the classic line of land appreciates, buildings depreciate, which is obviously your territory. You say that like it's a bad thing, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and so obviously you should buy something with the most land content that you can. But what I've since learned, it's about the quality of the land. Say for a million dollars, you get a one bedroom in Bondi. In Melbourne, you get maybe a townhouse or a semi. In Queensland, you get a four bedroom house. And in the Northern Territory, you get a million acres. But in the middle of summer, are you going to get 50 or 100 people queuing up for those million acres in the Northern Territory? No, because there's no demand for it. Mm. So it's all about the quality and the scarcity of the land rather than the quantity. Yep. Now, just to um, clarify, land appreciates, buildings depreciate. We do know that. But you, as an accountant, you would recommend that once someone buys it, in, once they've bought that investment property, an appreciation schedule from Washington Brown's a no-brainer, right, Chris? Oh, 100%. Because <laughs> Again, in the early days, so I didn't know about depreciation until probably 20, 25 years ago in my late 20s or 30s. Again, a lot of the firms were almost guaranteeing that whatever you spent on the report, you'd be getting that within the first two, year or two in deductions. So it's a no-brainer. It pays for itself. Why, why wouldn't you get it, go and get those deductions?